for Bowman Library with a whole new middle grade book spotlight. So our theme for this week is all about graphic novels. You may love graphic novels, you may not really care about them, you may not even really know about them, but graphic novels can be super awesome, amazing. We have some incredible choices. They can be fiction, they can be nonfiction, they can be adaptations of stories that you've heard before. They're even taking chapter book series and turning them into graphic novels now. So we have six we're going to take a look at just to kind of explore. You may be a graphic novel novice, maybe you start with one of these, or maybe all you read is graphic novels and you're, you want to get your hands on these. So let's get started. Our first one is Class Act by Jerry Craft. This is the sequel to New Kid, which won the New Fairy Award a couple of years ago. So it's the second year for our main character, Jordan. He's at Riverdale Academy Day School. But in this book, in this volume, the focus is more, not only just on him, but now on his best friend, Drew. So Jordan and Drew are both one of the few black students who go to their school and Drew plays basketball, which even then brings up a totally different set of expectations and assumptions than what Jordan faces. And as Jordan and Drew navigate the hallways of their school, they're both treated differently from everyone else, and they're even treated differently from each other because Jordan looks almost lighter than Drew. This is all about their lives inside the school and outside the school with their friendship. It's going to be what's going to get them through this school year. This incredibly realistic graphic novel will let you walk in the shoes of others and see life through their eyes, almost showing the importance of friendship and the role it can play. You don't need to read a new kid to understand this one, but I will tell you it does help. So maybe read a new kid, but if you've read a new kid already, you will love class. White Bird by R.J. Palacio. So we know, if you know R.J. Palacio, if you've read the book Wonder, you know R.J. Palacio. And this was her first foray into graphic novels. So this kind of takes on, you know, Julian from our Wonder book. He plays a role in this one. And this is all based on a homework assignment Julian has to do for school. And he ends up going to interview his grandmother, or grandmare as he calls her, because that's grandmother in French. And in our story, this is her story. She, her first name is Sarah, and she's growing up in France in the 1940s. Sarah's family was French, but they were also Jewish, and she had a happy life, and you know, she had an amazing family, but all that changes when the Germans invade France in 1940. She honestly thought life would just continue the way it's been continuing, especially since they were living in what was called the quote-unquote safe zone. But then her mother disappears one evening, and a couple years after, the Germans show up at her school, and they are there to arrest anyone who is Jewish. So Sarah's able to escape, but she doesn't know what she's supposed to do. Like, she's on the run. They want to arrest her because she's Jewish. And she's found by one of her classmates, who brings her to his house and hides her for the rest of the war. This incredible story of World War II is one that's a must read and will open your eyes and your soul to what people experience even when you don't even think about that type of stuff. You may find yourself crying at moments, I will tell you this, you might need a box of tissues, but this is an amazing graphic novel, White Bird. Oh. Astronauts, Women on the Final Frontier. And this is, again, a non-fiction one. And graphic novels don't have to be fiction. They can be non-fiction. So this take on space history is all about the women who made the space race happen, both in front and behind the scenes. You will follow these real-life astronauts as they work as engineers, trained to be astronauts, and eventually some of them actually got to go into space. The women went through all of the same stuff and tests as the men did. And some actually did it better than the men, but they had to work harder to gain respect just because of their gender. Without them, then, the space race would have been completely different. Based on firsthand interviews with the women featured throughout this graphic novel, you will gain an appreciation for these individuals, some maybe you heard of, others maybe you have not yet, as well as what it takes to be an astronaut, especially in the past. This is astronaut. Catwad, it's me. So Catwad is a grumpy blue cat, and his best friend, Warp, is the complete opposite, with complete with even being an orange cat. So Blurp, though, can be a little unsure 
dark sometimes. So this is filled with short chapters and stories featuring these two cats, and you get to see them interact in these hilarious situations, and sometimes there's even some gross stuff that happens, and we'll leave you laughing out loud. So if you love like the Garfield comics, this is kind of a, a modern take on that type of like format. This is very similar, you'll appreciate it. This is the first in a series. We do have multiple catwalks, so you might want to pick up a few if you pick up this one, because you're going to blow right through this one, you're going to want the next one. But if you love a book with a dark sense of humor and with cats, catwalk. Anti-hero. So Sloan, that brood, and Pico Pajaro are 13 years old, and they're both living in East Gotham. But those are their only similarities. Piper is Latino. She's living with her grandparents as her scientist parents are off in Antarctica running experiments. But then she also has superhuman strength. And she has an alter ego named Hummingbird. While Sloan is white, her grandfather is known as the Bear, who is this incredibly notorious villain, and she is a robotics genius who also has an alter ego, and she goes by Grey. But instead of being a superhero, she is a super villain, actually, because of her grandfather. So when the two robots pass, while well, they're sneaking into this super secret lab, but they have different motives for doing so, they end up switching their bodies like almost like a Freaky Friday type thing, and then they have to work together in order to get back to their real selves, all while trying to juggle school, families, and lives as 13-year-olds. A unique take us on superheroes full of non-stop action and things that every reader can relate to, even if you're not a real-life superhero. Must read, especially if you love DC Comics, anti-hero. And our last one is twins. So identical twin sisters, Francine and Maureen, have done everything together. But on their first day of sixth grade, they learn that they will be spending the day apart almost for the first time as they have completely different schedules. This allows them to make their own identities and friends, which Francine dives head first into. But Maureen is not so sure and she's a little more introverted and she starts to miss her whole way of life with her sister. When things come to a head between them, it results in the two of them running against each other for student council president, and things start to get messy between them to the point where I could change their relationship forever. The first in the series, this graphic novel, realistic look at sisters, middle school, and figuring out who you really are is one that everyone can relate to and see themselves in at one point or another. This is twins. So these are just six of the graphic novels that we have here at the library, but I can promise you this. We have tons more. We have a whole graphic novel section. So I encourage you to come on out. If you're looking for a graphic novel, check out one of these six, or we can help you find that perfect graphic novel, or at least show you the section, and maybe take your time to pick your own. I hope you tune back next week when we have a whole new little grade book spotlight, and I hope you have a great week.